Tonight, a new rule aims to close a loophole for immigrant families, why the administration says it will help curb illegal immigration, and sanctioning Iran, the latest in the pressure campaign as tensions with the regime grow. Plus, the emotional toll of hurricanes and how some people in their wake are starting to find hope after the storm. All this and more tonight on Faith Nation. A new move to end a long-standing immigration policy. Welcome to Faith Nation. I'm John Jessup. And I'm Jenna Browder. Catch and release no more. Today, the Trump administration announced a new rule to crack down on illegal immigration. Ending catch and release would mean ending family separations. CBN White House correspondent Ben Kennedy joins us with more on the loopholes that are going to be closed. Ben? Well, John, Jenna, the new rule means families would be kept together and held for the duration of their immigration proceedings. Critics, however, say not so fast and plan to take this action to court. The driving factor for this crisis is weakness in our legal framework for immigration. The White House now plans to fix that by ending parts of the so-called Flores Amendment, a federal court agreement that limits how long immigrant children can be detained. What this will do is substantially increase our ability to end the catch and release uh, challenges that have fueled this crisis for families. DHS Acting Secretary Kevin McAleenan said migrant families will be detained until their day in court. Previously, children could only be held for 20 days. He announced families will be kept together and unveiled plans for new housing with medical facilities, soccer fields, and even access to video conferencing for court proceedings. McAleenan said the old agreement basically served as an incentive for illegal entry, adding to the backlog of immigration cases. Human smugglers advertise and intending migrants know well that even if they cross the border illegally, Arriving at our border with a child has meant that they will be released into the United States to wait for court proceedings that could take five years or more. Nevada Congresswoman Dina Titus called this move illegal and unconscionable. DHS reports that in the first 10 months of this fiscal year, U.S. Customs and Border Protection apprehended or encountered almost 475,000 family members. In May alone, that number reached 88,000, 90 percent crossed unlawfully between ports of entry. If the Democrats would meet and we could fix the loopholes and asylum, which is what you're talking about to an extent. But let me just tell you, very much I have the children on my mind. It bothers me very greatly. Now, in the past, Border Patrol ran out of bed space, so it's not clear how they will be able to accommodate families staying together. We are hearing the new rule will be published on Friday, then go into effect in about 60 days. But odds are this move will face legal challenges, so we'll have to wait and see what the courts decide. John Jenna. Thanks, Ben. Well, America's debt is growing to levels not seen since World War II. The annual deficit for fiscal 2019 had been projected to reach $896 billion. According to revised numbers put out by the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, it will now reach $960 billion. Next year's deficit is expected to top a trillion dollars. It was previously projected to be $892 billion. The faster-than-expected growth in federal deficit spending is a result of the trade war with China and a bipartisan agreement to avoid a government default. When it comes to the Federal Reserve, it appears members were divided on the interest rate and cutting it last month. Notes from that meeting were released today. Some wanted to double the cuts, while others lobbied to keep them the same. This as President Trump continues to blame the Fed over fears of a possible recession. Trump says they need to do more to cut interest rates. I think the Fed has been very late and very early. They were very early to raise and they're very, very late to cut. And with questions over what's next for interest rates and the economy, Wall Street saw gains today. The Dow Jones ended up 240 points and the S&P 500 was up 23 points. Nasty. That's how the president characterized the Danish prime minister's not-for-sale response about buying Greenland. Even though Mr. Trump announced he's backing out of an official state visit to Denmark in early September, which came as a surprise to the Danes, the prime minister says the cancellation won't hurt the relationship between the two countries. Uh, this uh, does not change uh, the character of our good relations. And we will, of course, from Denmark continue our ongoing dialogue 
with the US on how we can develop our cooperation and deal with the many common challenges we are facing. Greenland is a semi-autonomous territory of Denmark, relying on the European nation for about two-thirds of its budget. The main island sits northeast of Canada between the Arctic and Atlantic Oceans. Well, the president says he's done more for Israel than any president before him. Today, he accused the Democratic Party of being increasingly anti-Israel. This after he was criticized yesterday for comments he made about Jewish voters. And I think any Jewish people that vote for a Democrat, uh, I think it shows either a total lack of knowledge or great disloyalty. And here now with us is David Brody, CBN's chief political analyst. David, his comments have stirred a lot of controversy. And when it comes to the Jewish vote and party affiliation, it's not so cut and dry. No, it's not. But here is what is cut and dry. Donald Trump talked about how uh, Jews, if they're not basically supporting Israel, they're not loyal to Israel. That's not how Jews see it. American Jews, liberal American Jews, which are most American Jews in, in the United States, they see it this way. Liberalism and the Democratic Party go hand in hand. They are liberal. They vote Democrat. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Israel's an afterthought. So in essence, liberalism trumps, so to speak, Israel in this matter. And I think that is something that uh, President Trump did not address. But that's the most important part for American Jews in this country. I will say one last thing. I mean, I grew up as a Reformed Jew uh, in New York. And I, I've had interesting conversations with my family. And I will not name names. But I will just say some family members basically say to me that they talk about the poor Palestinians, that Israel is the oppressor. These are American Jews saying Israel is the oppressor. And I'm shaking my head going, wait, help me understand it. But why? Liberalism trumps Israel. Israel, especially if Netanyahu is in charge, that's the way they see it. Uh, David, Twitter was ablaze today with a tweet uh, that declared Trump the, the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then today, he uh, this was yesterday, and then today he uh, called himself the chosen one to take on China. There's a lot of talk of the, you know, all of, what, what's all of this Messiah talk about? What do you make of it? Yeah, well, look, I, Donald Trump does this. He loves the shock value. When he said the chosen one today, he looked up to the heavens and said, I am the chosen one. And I'm sure... Uh, there are quite a few evangelicals that went, oh, my gosh, why did he do that? And, you know, that's sacrilegious and all of that. The truth of the matter is he's having a little fun. He likes the shock value. And here's a way Donald Trump could lose all evangelical support if he actually believed that he was the chosen one and the second coming of God. I think evangelicals would not support him at that point. He doesn't believe that, uh, obviously, but this is just a little bit of fun and games with the media. We'll have a field day with it for sure. Uh, on the topic of Greenland, President Trump has now canceled his state visit to Denmark. Uh, David, this is a big deal. Well, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a big deal in the 24-hour cycle. I think we'll be on to something. We clearly will be on to something tomorrow because we always are on to something tomorrow. <laughs> but one of the, with the story that you just mentioned about Denmark, when John was reading it, uh, you know, the, the prime minister there of Denmark basically said that what Donald Trump was proposing to buy Greenland from the, or the United States buying Greenland was absurd. She used the word absurd. Well, look, A, I think we know we don't insult Donald Trump. He's a bit sensitive. Uh, and beyond that, uh, you know, Donald Trump is a wild card. So, you know, Dealing with Donald Trump in the United States, he's not a politician, have you heard? So therefore, he's going to be a little different. And Greenland, or Greenland, Denmark definitely uh, heard that today, for sure. David, uh, finally, to the administration's new immigration rule. Mm -hmm. How are they going to make this work? We've already seen immigration facilities busting at the seams. And now we're talking about holding families together for even longer than 20 days? Mm -hmm. Congress is going to have to step up. I mean, I don't think there's any question about it. In other words, there's going to need to be more bed space. And uh, these family detention centers that we've heard about, by the way, let's just be clear. We're not talking about these families staying in the same conditions that they are in now. We're talking about some other detention centers around the country, whether it be in Pennsylvania, Texas, other places. Not what we're seeing in Homestead, Florida, and that. That's not what we're talking about. Apparently, according to the Department of Homeland Security, these detention centers are pretty nice. They've got the big screen TVs soccer and the couches, fields. the soccer fields. So we'll see. Either way, it's an overcrowding problem, and, and Congress is going to have to step up. But if this goes through, and we're a long way from that, 60 days, first this has to go through, this rule has to be in place for six, excuse me, six hours. I just ran out of breath. 60 days. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's like I know it? the show's a marathon, uh, but 60 days. And then, of course, the courts are going to have some say as well. So this is is by far a done deal, but if it goes through, catch and release is done forever, and that is a huge deal. Real quick, that is the reason the administration is doing this. They believe less people will come to the United States if they know catch and release will not be in place in the, in the U.S. All right, David, we have to leave it there. I'm exhausted. Thank you. I need water. Thanks, Thanks, David.
Well, tonight, escalating tension between Iran and the United States. The regime says it will unveil a new missile defense, miss, uh, new air missile defense system. Speaking before the United Nations Security Council today, Security of State, Secretary of State rather, Mike Pompeo condemned the missile tests and the regime's seizing oil tankers in the Gulf. Here's our Gabe LaMonica. The Iranian supertanker seen here is central to the latest diplomatic dispute between the U.S. and Iran. Departing Gibraltar this week after a month-long detention by the U.K., the U.S. is authorizing the seizure of the supertanker for breaching U.S. sanctions. After its release, the ship changed its name and is now believed to be leased by the Iran Revolutionary Guard, which the U.S. labels a terror group. At issue, whether the ship, which is believed to be carrying some 2.1 million barrels of crude oil, makes it to Syria. Now in international waters, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo issued a warning Tuesday to any country assisting the ship. We want to deny them the resources to continue the horrific terror campaign all across the world. That's the rationale for preventing a ship that's loaded with crude oil arriving in Syria. The president insisted Wednesday that U.S. sanctions against Iran are working. Iran is a very far weakened nation right now. Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Zarif told NBC News, Negotiations are still on the table. I'm not ruling out talks. What I'm saying is that talks should be based on mutual respect. With tensions high, these U.S. Navy Special Forces paratroopers dropping from the sky train for the recovery of a hijacked ship. The joint U.S.-Israeli military exercise last week comes as the U.S. is planning a mission to protect shipping in the Strait of Hormuz. Most of the violence, terror, and chaos engulfing the region leads back to one place, to Tehran. Speaking at the UN, Israeli Ambassador Danny Danone said Iran was the greatest threat to peace and security in the region. Behind closed doors, many of the ambassadors and leaders freely admit this fact. Gabe LaMonica, CBN News, Washington. Thank you, Gabe. Pulling back on U.S. Over, uh, US aid overseas. How proposed cuts could impact countries in Africa after this. It's the new Superbook Bible app. It's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Young people, millennials, are flocking to church. It's not an exaggeration to say that we love to meet them and that we love to know their stories. Come home to the Southern Gospel Station from CBN Radio. You'll enjoy a rich Southern blend of bluegrass, classic gospel, and Southern Gospel favorites. CBN Southern Gospel, available now at CBNRadio.com. Superbook fans, here's something else you'll love. <laughs> it's the new Superbook Bible app. <laughs> it's packed with games, activities, and Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Oh, no! There's trivia, a fun daily devotional, and answers to your Bible questions. Plus, an easy-to-understand Bible the whole family will enjoy. You can even create your own Superbook character. Ta-da! Whoa. Oh, oh. Falls, man. Come and... oh, sorry, pardon me. Sorry, excuse me. Ouch! Are you getting this? Earn super points to win daily prizes, too. And so much more! <sighs> Time to get back to my adventures. See you soon. It's the new Superbook Bible app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Welcome back. The Trump administration is looking for ways to cut big money from foreign aid projects. Reports say the president wants to save $4 billion from going overseas. Abigail Robertson is following the story and joins us now with the details. Abigail, where would this money be pulled from? 
Well, this is money that Congress has appropriated for foreign aid in previous year's budget packages, and the White House is considering canceling it through what's called a rescission, rescissions package because it has not yet been spent or designated for specific projects. Now, most of this money goes to the U.N. and things like their peacekeeping programs overseas and military assistance projects. But reports of these possible foreign aid cuts are being met with a lot of backlash on both sides of the aisle. I spoke with David Brody earlier today about why some lawmakers are arguing cut making these cuts may cost us more money in the long run. A lot of countries receive this money and in essence say, hey, look, we need the money because we have some unstable uh, governments in these countries. And if we don't have this money, uh, then we're gonna possibly go into ruin as it relates to democracy or relates to just an unstable situation. So therefore, the idea here is that this money would go to helping America's national security because if there's unstable governments around the world, then indeed that could be a big problem for America. Trump says we can expect a final decision on whether or not these cuts will be sent to Congress by the end of this week. Abby, um, CBN News got an exclusive tip earlier this week about some of these proposed cuts and how it would affect abortion funding in Africa. How, how would all of this work? Well, John, right now the administration is specifically target, targeting what's known as voluntary family planning funds that are typically dispersed through the U.S. Agency for International Development. Here's what David has to say about how this loophole might be funding some abortions overseas. When it comes to abortion, the USAID actually gets money for voluntary family planning. And what the Trump administration is basically saying is that, wait, wait a minute, you're getting this money for voluntary family planning, but you may be skirting or evading U.S. policy, that Mexico City policy we hear so much about, because you're not supposed to be spending that money to either actively promote or perform abortions in other nations. They believe that some of this money is actually going to do that. And so therefore, they want to stop that. That's part of that waste uh, and fraud in this case. And David also mentioned that while most of this money is going to the U.N. and national security programs, the administration really wants a big budget cut to tout on the 2020 campaign trail. Abigail, uh, just a few seconds left. What kind of reaction are these cuts getting in Congress? Well, Democrats are strongly opposed to these cuts. And even a few Republicans like Senator Lindsey Graham argue that this money is crucial for national security. And there's also concern that if the White House proceeds with canceling funds that Congress already appropriated, this will set a bad precedent for future budget talks if Democrats feel like the administration will just cancel funding for things that they don't want after Congress already approves it. All right, Abigail Robertson, thanks so much for that report. Processing emotions while picking up the pieces. Up next, the damage hurricanes can have on people hardest hit. Are you suffering from feeling tired or worn out during the day? Can you not turn off your brain at night? You are not alone. Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the Sleep Doctor, and I've partnered with the Christian Broadcasting Network, and we're gonna bring you some unbelievable information that you can use tonight to get a better night's rest. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Protect Your Sleep today. If you want to be an attorney with a passion for serving people and for excellence, Regent University needs to be high on your list. Regent's award-winning law school doesn't just create lawyers. We create leaders, judges, prosecutors and defense lawyers, civil litigators and leaders in government. My focus has been trying to really make sure we have the future leaders we need for the, the bench and the bar and for society generally. You'll learn from highly credentialed leaders who are current and former judges, distinguished scholars, and ACLJ counsel. I'm so glad I chose Regent. Uh, the relationships here have been amazing. The faculty have been amazing. Not everybody's called to the same thing when they leave law school but they're called by a God who has a purpose for their lives, and he is going to use that education to make a difference in the world. Regent will prepare you to be a purpose-driven, practice-ready lawyer. To start your rewarding law career, complete the online application, submit your transcripts, and take the law school admissions test by July. Apply today. If you want to be an attorney with a passion for serving people and for excellence, Regent University needs to be high on your list. 
Regents award-winning law school doesn't just create lawyers, we create leaders, judges, prosecutors and defense lawyers, civil litigators and leaders in government. Ready to become a purpose-driven, practice-ready lawyer? To start your rewarding career, complete the online application, submit your transcripts, and take the law school admissions test by July. Well, welcome back. Well, the U.S. is just over a month into hurricane season, and so far, so good. The Atlantic Ocean has remained fairly calm. Experts say it's been the calmest season in more than 35 years. The last time the U.S. went this far into the season without seeing any named storms was back in 1982. And while the latest hurricane forecasts predict relative calm for the rest of the month, it most likely will not last. Well, last year, Hurricane Michael hit Florida's Gulf Coast with 160 mile an hour winds, and the Category 5 storm did more than $25 billion in damage. And today, survivors are are still suffering both financially and emotionally. Here's Caitlin Burke on how some of them are finding relief. So Melissa Anderson is in survival mode. Really um, just pushing myself to get out of bed every day because even when you build yourself up to the point of thinking, okay, I'm going to get my day going, my week going, you walk out of the front door and you look and it's just complete devastation everywhere. Her family lost everything when Category 5 Hurricane Michael ripped through the panhandle. She didn't realize that the heaviness she felt was actually anxiety and depression. We don't exactly talk about our feelings. We just all just kind of bottled up and living like gypsies because we're technically we're homeless. So from hotel to room to room. Hurricanes and other natural disasters lead to an incredible amount of stress and anxiety for survivors, contributing to mental health issues like depression and PTSD. Instead of waiting for people to seek help, counselors from the Life Management Center of Northwest Florida are able to search for those who need assistance. It's part of a program called Project Hope. We just go out in the community. We kind of talk to people about who we are, and we make them aware of what resources are available to them for us in the mental health setting, as well as something as simple as just coping skills. As counselors go door to door, they're not looking to diagnose people. They're simply looking to connect. Sometimes just seeing people to know that someone believes in them, someone believes that they can recover, someone believes that they can get over the current situation in their life, that means a lot. That's what Jamaica Tompkins has been for Melissa and her family. She's been a real light in our lives. She's been really sweet. It's just really a tough thing. Everybody's going through it, and to have somebody to be a source of positivity and refreshment, encouragement, it's, it's been well needed. For Panama City resident Amy Scollin, Jamaica and her Project Hope teammate were an answer to prayer. I was just sitting here on the porch praying <laughs> that I was at my wits end and didn't know what to do. And Jamaica and another lady, Shannon, showed up and I think God sent me those angels and they have been so good to me. Um, they helped with everything from food to getting me in touch with the right people to get assistance for our electric and water and things like that. And they just check up on me, which it, you don't feel so alone anymore. One of the hardest things is sometimes accepting that sometimes the only thing that I can be is an ear, a referral, or a confidant. Um, someone to offer emotional support and, you know, be okay with it. I think it's just important that we all know that anytime somebody goes through a trauma, whether it's a personal trauma or a mass trauma like, like the hurricane has been, that, that it can affect our mental health in, for anybody. And we've seen this affect people from um, the lowest of income in our area to the highest of income, those that had less stability in their lives prior to to those who had the most stability you know in their lives prior to the hurricane it's affected everybody and i think people people just need to know that it's okay to reach out and get assistance when you need it community relations head yeah. trisha pierce has helped get project hope volunteers into organizations like the boys and girls club if you have coping skills that are not listed on here it gives you a spot on the back to write them down do you guys want to hear our examples of our I think the staff from Project Hope has done a great job at trying to build a relationship 
uh, with the kids that are here. Uh, you know, that's the most important thing that you can do with a young person is to develop a relationship with them and to see what they're interested in, uh, find out what they're good at, or, or maybe just try to begin a conversation and the dialogue with their personal life a little bit. And then that's how you make the connection with a child and then they're more apt to share. While this FEMA program is helping meet the mental health needs of this community through February of next year, counselors hope disaster stays away so it won't be needed again anytime soon. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Panama City, Florida. Coming up next, more on a new campaign promoting civility and honor the late Senator John McCain. Prophecy thousands of years old. We were called to be a light to the world. Being fulfilled today. Discover how. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000. We consider it our duty to reach out and help others around the world. For a gift of $10 or more, you can own the acclaimed CBN documentary to life. Just call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. To treat a human, no matter what he is, which religious he have, which color he is, this is what I'm doing. See how the people of Israel are fulfilling prophecy. History is being written, and I want to be a part of it. By sharing their knowledge. In Africa, in Asia, in South America, in East Europe. And their love. This is how we work. This is us. Get to life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. Get Protect Your Sleep and discover how to improve the quality of your life. A free DVD or booklet from the Christian Broadcasting Network. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Five leading experts help remove the obstacles between you and restorative sleep. When you don't get a restful night's sleep, you wake up with an accumulation of stress. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet today. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. You'll discover how food affects your sleep, how to put insomnia to rest, explore effective remedies for sleep apnea, and much more in Protect Your Sleep. Wake up to your best life and get Protect Your Sleep today. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to get your free DVD or booklet. The late Senator John McCain was known to ruffle a few feathers, but he also had a reputation of working with his colleagues on Capitol Hill, no matter their party affiliation. Well, in that spirit, the McCain Institute is launching a new social campaign called Acts of Service to honor his legacy on the one-year anniversary of his passing. Please take some time that week to re-engage with someone whom you disagree or commit to work together with someone who has had a different perspective than you and find common ground. By taking this simple step, we join together and can help inspire a renewal of civil engagement that is critical for us to meet the challenges of the future. The McCain Institute asks all who participate to post about their experiences on social media with the hashtag AccessCivility and to challenge their friends and family to do the same. Well, I like that. Find common ground. That's right. And a great way to honor Senator McCain. Yeah, very nice. Well, that's going to do it for tonight's Faith Nation. Have a great evening.